basketball at Rhode Island, just hasn't played basketball here at Pitt. So going to be a really interesting early season for the Panthers. You get a look at two of the guys on the floor, of course, and that is Carrington and Leggett. And it is Bob Carrington who handles and Pitt gets the ball first off the tap. Federico, and here's Henson on the drive, a little soft stop and a score for Blake Henson gets his going tonight. Wes, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody stop like that. That wasn't exactly a jump stop, <laughs> yeah. but it worked. Florida Gulf Coast, their best player is on the bench to start tonight. That's Isaiah Thompson, Ramir Barno, Cyrus Largi, Chase Johnston, Zach Anderson, Keyshawn Kelman is a Princeton transfer. And he gets the ball inside here on the block. This is Kelman backing down on Federico. Long three out front, off the mark, and the rebound for Zach Austin, a transfer from High Point who has joined this program at Pitt and already had an impact as well. Here's Carrington to the basket, and he'll draw the foul. That is Chase Johnston who stepped in front of him to draw personal number one. West Florida Gulf Coast likes to shoot the three. They fire up a lot of them. So far this year, they haven't made a very good percentage. Pat Chambers told us today that he'd really like if they would score a little bit more from two. But when you miss threes, that allows a team like Pitt that wants to get out in transition to really get out and go. First points for Bub Carrington as you get a look at Pat Chambers. Second year in Fort Myers. 208 wins in his career. Second free throw from Carrington is good. The freshman from Baltimore had the triple-double on opening night against North Carolina a &T. Quite a statement to begin your Pittsburgh career for Bob Carrington. Baseline, this is Anderson, and he'll draw a foul. Zach Anderson is a junior from Apopka, Florida, who averaged about 31 minutes a year ago. And he draws Blake Henson's first and number one tonight on Pitt. Anderson is a big guy, Wes. He's not a bruiser. Goes about 6'7", 205 pounds, but he's a pretty good shooter. He's a solid rebounder. And as he showed you right there, he can handle the ball a little bit. Henson is a very valuable player for this pit offense. He's got to be careful to stay out of early foul trouble. Anderson had been two of two at the free throw line before the miss there through the first couple of games. Hit the back end to put the Eagles on the board. And both teams have started in man-to-man. -man. Henson, long two out front. And the rebound pulled away by Anderson. Three ball, or two ball from in front is knocked down, and that is Largy. The uh, senior from Miramar. And right back the other way, the Panthers answer. Henson a triple. And Henson likes to shoot him, and the further away, the better. And he can really get good looks in transition. Florida Gulf Coast has got to get back. In traffic, Anderson. Kelman tried to keep it alive, slapped it away to Austin. That's great hands by Austin. Carrington. Wrap around inside. Federico, the catch and score. Boy, what a pass by Leggett. And that's what Federico does. They don't run plays for him, but he does a great job finding open spots, particularly after dribble penetration or off the screen and roll. Early six-point lead here for the Panthers. Inside, there's the dunk from Kelman. Keyshawn Kelman is a terrific prospect who had, as you see, 14 and seven against Ave Maria last Friday night in Fort Myer. And the home opener for the Eagles after a road loss at Indiana started their campaign. Henson a nice move. He's got seven early. He can be a very streaky player, and you can't just play him to shoot the three. He does a nice job handling the ball and scoring off the dribble. He had 26 against Binghamton on Friday night. Jump hook no good from Kelman. You're not going to shoot it over Federico. And Carrington really drives the ball. Deep three. Oh, Henson was standing in the script pit when he launched it. I don't feel like he has a range limit. 
I don't feel like he feels he has a range limit. There's a three out front. And the Eagles answer quickly. And Raheem Again, was, Barno knocked it down. Yeah, that was Barno. He hadn't been shooting the threes, but he is capable, and they like to get out, and they like to shoot him in transition. There's Carrington. Well, not a lot of time to wait around on defense, Dan. The ball's going up here early. <laughs> Baseline drive, that's Largy. And another one out of the corner. Barno has delivered back-to-back -back threes, Dan, after he started the season 0 for 4. Now he's got 8 of the 11 points. Yep. Little zone defense now. From the corner, Austin the 3. Federico recovers and fouled on the stick back. And that is Kelman drawing his first. And the second on the Eagles. Pitt with an early two-point lead on FGCU. And he lost four really key guys, and but he's got some key guys remaining. And Blake Henson is one of those guys who is off to a really good start with seven points here. And of course, Capel now in his sixth year took the Panthers to the tournament last year, but I, I tell you, the thing about it was they you know, they got wins. They got critical wins during the season. And we were talking today with him about just the building process in the last three years, let alone the first two, which were so rugged to overcome in terms of just, you know, culture and, and the things you have to do. Here's Weir inside off the bench now for the Eagles. And Andre Weir, the 6'10 junior from Hollywood, Florida, missed the shot and then commits a foul as Austin cleared away the rebound. Uh, they've tried to go inside a couple of times now against Federico. And Federico, yeah, he's a little bit thin, and you can muscle him, but he does a good job maintaining his position, and then it's just really hard to shoot over him. Third foul on the Eagles, and the first on Weir. Franco Miller Jr. from the Bahamas has come on the floor. And right there at the foul line area, Leggett, Drives down on the back down dribble and scores his first point. So the transfer from Rhode Island, Ishmael Leggett on the board, and the Panthers have pushed it to a four point lead. Barno. Dalion Johnson has also checked in. Transfer from Penn State on the floor for the first time, and Austin got a hand on it, but it was ultimately deflected away. And it looked like Franco Miller was the last guy to touch it there for Pat Chambers' team. Panthers really turning up the defensive intensity. Yep, here comes Jorge Diaz Graham into the lineup. And Pat Chambers' team with an intention to go to the block. But so far, Pitt has turned away the Eagles a couple of times. We got Federico. And here is Carrington, the rookie. Ishmael left open for three. Leggett can't hit it. And the Eagles. Three out of the corner was an air ball. Leggett and Pitt on the run. All the way down and knocked away. And last touch by FGCU. Boy, Wes, you really don't have much time to get settled in on defense in a game like this. Leggett pushing the ball very hard, and it's, it does a nice job getting by. Loses it out of bounds, though. Isaiah Thompson, who was a preseason A Sun choice, is in the ball game. And the foul was ticketed to Franco Miller. It'll be his first. Fourth on the Eagles. And there is Guillermo Diaz Graham. The older of the twins from Tenerife and the Canary Islands. And so far, the struggle for Pitt has been at the free throw line. The Panthers. Well, that one goes down, so. This is a really big pit line up against yep. a relatively small Florida Gulf Coast line. Baseline layup. 
and the Eagles back on the board to cut it to within three. Zach Anderson with his first field goal. There's Henson fighting through, and he'll draw another Florida Gulf Coast foul. Lee Cassell with Roger Ayers and Anthony Eads tonight on the whistle. And we talked about Zach Anderson and his ability to handle the ball, and he's created a couple of baskets like that in this ball game. And here is Henson at the line. He's got seven. Make it eight. Dan, he's going to be 24 years old on December 26th. And for me, and it was interesting, I thought, to listen to Jeff Capel talk about his leadership today with this team. And it's a different kind of leadership than what they have with Jamarius Burton the last couple of years. But is, uh, and that's because Henson is a different kind of person. You know, Burton very, very serious. Henson, not so much. This is Weir going to work. Left hand turn, nicely done. Andre Weir's third field goal of the year. And his first basket tonight. Long three from out on the left. Missed by Carrington. And we're going to get a block call. As you see, Dalion Johnson, the junior from Boston and the transfer from Penn State, colliding with Guillermo Diaz Graham. Well, Graham is trying to get in position, but he never has both feet on the floor facing the dribbler. And it's a, the Florida Gulf Coast might have a little bit better chance going inside against the Diaz Graham twins. Weir, they list them at 285. And the twins go about 200 and 210. Franco Miller, he try will to run the to offense. Weir. Yep. Here's Weir as Dan called it. And he'll draw the foul. So Pat Chambers heard your strategy, Bonner, and he really liked it. No, I heard Pat Chambers' strategy earlier today, <laughs> Wes. That time, the, the previous time, they allowed, the Panthers allowed Weir to really go to work. That time you saw they tried to double team him, and he drew the foul. A couple of fouls here on Jorge Diaz Graham. Wes, this Florida Gulf Coast team is a team that plays really hard. Mm. And they have hung right in there against the Panthers. Rear hit the first, missed the second. Now a little pressure. Ten-second violation. Yep, ten-second call against Henson and the Panthers. As you see, Jalen Lowe on the floor for the first time. That's the first time that the Eagles have shown that pressure, and the Panthers just a little slow reacting to it. Jeff Capel looking on at his team after their first turnover. In fact. The Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast University have only turned it over once. He's at battle inside. Weir. And that's Guillermo Diaz Graham. Jump shot is short. Here is Leggett in overdrive, trying to get to the rim again. And knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Panthers. And we mentioned Leggett is a guy who has great speed. He is a very aggressive offensive player. Low. Here's Henson, a three, left of the circle, missed everything. It'll go out of bounds to the Eagles. Right. <laughs> Henson can do that, Wes. He'll miss three or four in a row, and then he'll make five in a row. So Blake Henson will come out of the lineup. Jeff Capel, who talked to us earlier today about potentially trying to get to a nine-man rotation. And he's dipped into the depth here early. Austin back on the floor. You've got Guillermo Diaz Graham. There's a three by Johnston that's off the mark. And the rebound for Will Jeffress, a redshirt junior from Erie, who's back on the floor this season for the Panthers after missing all of last year. 
low on the drive, feeds Guillermo for the dunk. Wes, they don't really run very many plays for those big guys, but all of them, the Diaz, Graham, Twins, and Federico do a great job following the ball. We're the long three. Here's Leggett open floor. Step back. Off the mark, Austin tried to tap it home and I think they're gonna call the foul here on Weir, which will be his second. But uh, my goodness, Pitt waits for no man. Lowe gets it to Diaz Graham for the dunk. Panthers ahead. They couldn't go big game hunting, Dan. He's got a tough schedule, but they got some history of knocking off power fives. Well, of course, they're famous as the Dunk City Bunch from the NCAA tournament a few years ago. But, Wes, the interesting thing about them, they're playing tough opponents, but they're not playing those tough opponents to try to maneuver themselves in position for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, because I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's highly unlikely that the A-Sun is going to get an at-large bid. The only four games they have to win are in the conference tournament. That's the only way they're getting an NCAA tournament bid. But you play in places like Pittsburgh, you play in places like Indiana, you set yourself, you set yourself team up for tests that allows you to get better. Johnston kicks it to the corner, three by Anderson, I think. Kicked off the side of the glass, and here's Pitt now. Carrington back on the floor with Lowe. You see Zach Austin's out there, Guillermo Diaz Graham, and Will Jeffress who handles in the script. For Pitt. Low. Nice pass into the corner. Austin. Too strong with the three. Anderson ran it down. Did he travel with it? And Lee Cassell and Roger Ayers. Did he step out of bounds? I think he may have. Somebody stepped out of bounds. Yep. Hit the white line right there. Nice piece of officiating, fellas. No foul, just stepped out of bounds. Ball stays with the Panther. Low. Off the screen, couldn't knock down the foul line jump shot. Five-point lead for Pitt. Panthers are done a lot seven of, of 16 from the floor, man. Yeah, well, Lowe has done a lot of things here in the first two games, but he hasn't shot the ball well. Barno inside Kelman the catch and score. Second field goal for Keyshawn Kelman. Kelman's another big strong guy and on the inside. Nice execution of the screen and roll there. See the details on pitch shooting here recently. And a block call underneath. That's going to be on Barno. Seventh now on FGCU. Henson returns for the Panther. To replace Will Jeffress. Here is Zach Austin, who is one for his first four at the free throw line. Quick reminder to you that season four of All Access, the ACC Life, continues Sunday. Unprecedented access into the lives of the student athletes, coaches, staff, parents, and fans. Six o'clock Eastern, Sunday on ACC Network, and always streaming live for you on the ESPN app. One of two for Austin. Kelman scores again inside. That's where Florida Gulf Coast would like to go. And West, the Panthers have not helped themselves from the free throw line here early in the game. They've only seven for 12. Yeah, they've had plenty of chances. Low. Three ball. Got it. Jalen Low. Dan, that's his first three as a Panther. This is a kid who has a reputation. He can shoot the three, West, but. Still getting adjusted. This is only his third college game. Barno. There's a nice matchup. Kelman and Federico. 
And Keyshawn Kelman is starting to find a little bit of room inside. He's got eight in the first half to lead everybody. Now he used his body really, really well against Federico. Federico at 220. Oh my goodness. Bob Carrington. And they're going to take it off the board. I think they're going to call the kick out. And kicks his leg way out there, Wes. Yep. You're absolutely right. Yep. Basket comes off the board for Carrington. He'll get ticketed with his first. Fourth on Pittsburgh. And you saw Largy get around there defensively. Carrington comes out. Well, there would have been no foul. contact had Carrington not kicked his leg out, Wes, and that's that's the key. Largy was going by, and the leg got him. Johnston throws it up and in with the right hand. Chase Johnston's first points, and the Eagles to within one. Wes, and has, has Florida Gulf Coast has been able to score more effectively they've been able to get back and set their defense terrific drive and wow. score by low and setting your defense only works if you prevent that kind of drive johnston the long three bounds away low has really kind of impacted the game here in the last couple minutes henson Missing on the three. And Ramir Barno, the freshman from Philadelphia, is on the floor running the offense for Coach Chambers. Another three that bounds away. That was Kelman. I think Panthers be okay with that. Kelman is not a three-point shooter. Here's Lowe again. He'll miss on the three. Federico kept it alive. One dribble. Bounces in traffic, and Ishmael Leggett is fouled on the way up. And that'll get us to a timeout. Missouri City, Texas freshman. He's got to play freshman Ramir Barno out of Philadelphia, Dan. Quality minutes here because Isaiah Thompson's still coming back from a shoulder injury, and, and Barno, who came into the game averaging four points and was hitless from behind the three-point line, has answered that call in his third college game tonight, and so is Keyshawn Kelman, the Princeton transfer, with a lot more experience under his belt, obviously. And Kelman has done his damage mostly from the inside. Florida Gulf Coast is two for nine from beyond the arc, but they are eight for 13 inside the arc. And the Panthers still struggling from the free throw line. They're now seven for 13. You get a look at Pat Chambers, of course, who is a Philadelphia himself. Second free throw by Leggett. The transfer from Rhode Island was four. And now that's the Panthers, the Panthers with lead. some pressure. Mm -hmm. Pressure really bothered Florida Gulf Coast in their game at Indiana. Oh, my. Johnston throws up another runner with the right hand. Literally, literally throws yeah. it up. <laughs> Seven minutes to go in this first half. Third game of the year for both clubs. Baseline drive, Henson. And well defended by Anderson here. Zach Anderson at 6'7". Oh, this is Johnson. He is noted as a three-point shooter, but he's been cold from out there. There goes Carrington all the way to the basket. Goodness. What a drive. A, he's really some kind of player, Wes. Very impressive yeah. looking. Bob Carrington's got six to lead back to four for Pitt. Kelman could not take advantage of Federico. Anderson on the pass back to Kelman. Swiped out of there. Leggett on the attack. Ishmael Leggett winds through. 
That slapped out in the second chance. Tried to go right back to Federico. Too hot to handle. Dalian Johnson is handling momentarily out front. Now here's Anderson. Got a mismatch trying to get close. In the lane, jump shot good for Zach Anderson. Had a six inch height advantage against Leggett, just was very patient. The Panthers couldn't get any help. The Anderson's got five and four, and the Panthers have just committed their fourth turnover here of the first half. Federico tripped and fell down. No falling down here. Carrington with a great job, gets his head and shoulders past the defender and then has the strength to get to the goal. And here Anderson, just really good patience and a pivot and he gets that shot off before Federico can come to help. Out front, this is Isaiah Thompson. Back on the floor for Coach Chambers. Chase Johnston's had a couple runners inside, and the basket is good, and that's Dakota Rivers, a 6'8 senior from Windermere, Florida, who ties the game with his first field goal. Henson, a deep three again, and touched out by Rivers. It will stay with the Panthers. But Pitt is really fighting it behind the line. They are now two for 12 behind the line, Dan. And they are eight of 12 from two in this first half. These are both teams noted for their three-point shooting, not so much tonight. There is Ishmael Leggett. He's got six on his second field goal. He really is able to get to the basket. Johnson, that's a three, missed badly. Carrington ahead for Henson, and he'll draw the foul on the block. Rivers couldn't get set, and I believe he was in the moon, even if he had, but a, another score at the hoop for Leggett. Leggett, we said he likes to attack, and Henson likes to attack as well. <laughs> You got it. The defensive defender has to be set, and Rivers never got speak. set at all. <laughs> First of two for Henson. And Once you get set, you're allowed to you're allowed to move. You're allowed to move backwards. You're allowed to move laterally, and he just never got set. Guillermo Diaz Graham reports for Federico. Blake Henson, you see, with 10 and stays with 10. Only player in the game with double figures here in this first half. Baseline jumper, no good. Here's Lowe back on the floor. Into the corner, Carrington. Look at here, a three. And Diaz Graham was trying to battle for the rebound. I think Rivers is going to be called for the checkout here with under four to go. That'll bring us to a timeout. Pitt will have the basketball three-point lead when we continue. No, it sure hasn't. This is a team that set a school record for three-pointers made last year. Wes, I think part of the problem tonight is their shot selection from beyond the three-point arc. They've They've hurried the shot sometimes, and Blake Hinson in particular, he has taken a couple from the parking lot early in the shot clock. The Panthers have had such success being able to get the ball inside, but they're not getting inside by throwing it to the post. They get it inside by driving, going all the way to the basket and drawing the defense, and when they don't do that, they get a little stagnant on offense. Going to get free throws as we come back. This is Guillermo Diaz Graham. 12 points and a couple of threes himself in the ball game against Binghamton and misses for the free throw line for the first time this year. Nine so that for makes 17. the pain. Yeah. The struggle is real here for Pitt. And a 
second one no good. There's Isaiah Thompson coming front court. He's with Chase Johnston, Zach Anderson, Dalion Johnson, and Keyshawn Kelman. Entry pass for Kelman, double team. Johnson shoots for the tie. And here is Carrington trying to get Pitt going. Again, this is a half-court offense has been where the Panthers have had a struggle. Low on the drive, oh, tough shot oh, in the basket. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Yeah. Five-point lead. Jalen Lowe's got seven here in the first half. He's doubled his average. Almost a travel by Johnston. Elman putting it on the floor against Guillermo diaz Graham. Nice reverse and score for Keyshawn Kelman. Really good patience by Kelman. Jeffers was trying to get over there to double team, but Kelman did a nice job with the spin dribble to get away. Leggett inside the Diaz Graham who lost it but right to low. Low a lefty three. Got it. Jalen Lowe quickly to double figures. Two threes and two regular field goals for the rookie. He's really had himself a half, Wes. Yeah. Pitt's got a six-point lead. Thompson hand check and a foul. And Lowe will draw his first and the fifth on the Panthers. Dan. Showing you some versatility, Wes. Taking a drive into the basket. This is a very tough shot, sort of a one on three. And this is not a tough shot. He just drives his defender off with the dribble and then pulls up and knocks down the three. For a guy who hadn't made any threes coming in, he looks pretty smooth. Yep. Back on the drive, this is Anderson. Picked up against Jeffress. Kick out, the three ball from Thompson, no good. And foul gonna be called against Largi. It'll be his first. It's two shots at the other end for Pitt. On the double bonus here with 144 to go. Wes, coming in, the Panthers are a team that has not shot the ball well from the free throw line. It's still early in the season, but they were only 61% coming in. Ishmael Leggett is now three for five. And he's got seven here in the first half. Seven is as big as it's been for the Panthers in this first half, and now it's largest advantage. Eight-point lead. What has really helped the Panthers to this lead, Wes, is they have been unbelievably aggressive on the defensive end the last couple times, and that has helped them create some opportunities on the other end. Thompson has left the floor. Barno back for the Eagles. In the corner, Johnston fires. Rebound for Kelman. Skips it back to the wing. Johnston, and move it to Barno. Gets around low. Tried to get it to Kelman, and he couldn't hang on to it. I That's thought it was purpose. defended pretty well, wasn't it? Wes, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The Panthers were scrambling around on defense. A guy would get beat, somebody would rotate and help out, and Florida Gulf Coast eventually lost the ball. Carrington fouled on the three, and that's uh, Cyrus Largy. This is just a great job. You see the Panthers rotating around. Everybody's sprinting after one guy or another. And eventually, this just wears down Florida Gulf Coast. That's a really good defensive effort. So Carlton Carrington, better known as Bub, goes to the line. First of three. That's the second West. foul on Largie. Isn't he Little Bub? Technically, he is Little Bub. His dad is Bub. 
Carlton. Carlton, big Carlton, I guess you would say. <laughs> who is a terrific coach, both high school and AAU in the Baltimore area. In fact, the former Panther Jamel Artis was the beneficiary of Big Carlton's coaching. And there you see little Bob has worked his way to an 11 point first half. So you got your two freshman guards, both in double figures, right? Yeah. Well, no, I'm sorry, he's got nine. I said 11, he's got oh, nine, okay. Dan. Lowe's got 10, close enough. 11 point well, game, under a minute to go, and the ball got knocked away. It'll stay with the Eagles of Pat Chambers. Wes, if you hadn't said anything, nobody would have known. <laughs> I know. We just try and be factual, Dan, if nothing else, right? Informative and try to be as accurate as possible. Here's Kelman. Good pressure by the Panthers. Here's Miller now, kicking for Johnston, the deep three. There's Chase Johnston's calling card. That's his fifth three of the year. He's got seven in the first half. And about a five-second differential. Shot clock to game clock as we wind down this half. I think that was a big basket for Florida Gulf Coast. They're back no, in their back zone. Front. Leggett, foul line area. Jeffress turns and scores. Will Jeffress with just his fourth field goal of the year. And it puts the lead to 10. And a timeout here in the final, final 10.8. This is one of three games involving ACC schools tonight. We'll get you caught up on the scoreboard at halftime. The league is off to a terrific start, 23-5 and five after yesterday's play in the non-conference calendar. A couple weeks away before conference play begins. And there's a turnover with two seconds left. Carrington from half court and... The Panthers gonna take a 10 point lead to the locker room, Dan. 61% from the line. And that's exactly what they were in the first half. Did a nice job getting to the line. You have to convert though. Eagles have the ball to start second half. Barno into the lane. Jump shot over Carrington and Federico clears it for the Panthers. And at the other end, look at that. Oh. 10 now for Ishmael Leggett. Wes, that whole play started when Federico switched out defensively, forced Barno to stop, then got a rebound, and what a great pitch ahead by Carrington. And we talked about how aggressive Leggett can be offensively, and he's certainly shown that aggressiveness in transition here. And the three-point trip for Leggett, he's got 11 now. Five of seven at the free throw line after the conversion there. Kelman paid for it with his second foul, first to the frame on Florida Gulf Coast. Anderson answers for the Eagles. Seven now for Zach Anderson on his third field goal. The pressure offered by Coach Chambers' team and Bob Carrington. There's Leggett, lobs Federico the catch and flush. The defense went to Leggett because Leggett had shown the ability to get all the way to the basket, and you can't leave Federico standing alone under the basket. That is a really nice pass. Largi, baseline, Anderson blocked, and a foul call. Plays for their big guys, but they do look for them off penetration. And Puerto Rico just has a knack for being able to find the open spot. And this is a great delivery. Puerto Rico, the foul, his second. Anderson at the line. Now two for three with the conversion there. Zach Anderson is one of the guys that Pat Chambers talked about. Prior to the start of the season, he is one of the three guys who can impact our season and get us to where we want to go because of his ability to do so many things. He's a 14 and a half point score through two games to lead the Eagles and six rebounds. Henson can't answer with a three at the other end. 
11 point lead now for Pitt. And here is Anderson. And got it to Kelman and I believe it was blocked and then the foul called. So two shots coming for Kelman. When you miss threes, it creates some opportunities for guys to drive to the basket in early offense. And that time, really nice job by Anderson drawing the defense, forcing Austin into the foul situation. Deshaun Kelman from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Imagine he needed some tickets. And he got one of the two. 11 for Kelman. Lead is 10 for Pitt. Leggett, another lob, and that's Austin. First field goal for Zach Austin, the transfer from High Point. Everything built on the dribble penetration for the Panthers. Work on Federico. Left it Great short. Leg it. Leg it all the way down. The kick for Austin. On the drive and a foul on the Eagles. Uh, it's West. How many times have we seen this tonight? Leg it being able to do a nice job getting into the lane. Draws three defenders, and Austin just finds the open spot. <laughs> nice little lob. The charge was called on Zach Austin. Well, that's his second. And three quickly on Pitt from a team perspective here in the first two and a half minutes. Isaiah Thompson on the floor for the first time, second half. Anderson fall away. Oh. Inside Weir, the stick back. Andre Weir had some first half foul trouble with two quick ones, but he's got his second field goal. Big, big body, Wes. He's just a load for the Panthers to handle in the side. Henry, Henson can't rattle the three in. Now Thompson and the Eagles trying to find something offensively. Lead for Weir. There's Federico. Double team help from Henson. Johnston's three. Rebounded Largi, right back for Johnston. Now we're the dunk. At that time, the Florida Gulf Coast made Pitt pay for all their scrambling around on defense. They found some open opportunities and eventually got an easy offensive rebound. And the lob for Federico deflected by Weir, but he couldn't pull in the turnover before it goes out of bounds. So it will stay with Pitt and an eight-point lead for the Panthers. Here's Carrington working against Largi. Long two. Got it. What a nice pull up off the dribble. If a guy can do that, Wes, he's almost impossible to defend. Yep. He's got a smoothness about him too, Dan, for a young guy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, and a confidence as well. And a foul called. And it'll be on Federico, I believe. be the third on Federico and it is four now on Pitt. Jeff Capel's team up 10 here and Federico will get a seat. West they're up 10 but it doesn't feel like a comfortable 10 if you're a Pitt fan. That's right. Guillermo Diaz Graham you see checks in. There's Johnston now working against Ishmael Leggett. Baseline and they're going to call fast goaltending on Guillermo. They are. So Johnston gets his fourth field goal. He's got nine. But Ishmael Leggett's provided the power for the dunks. Federico and Austin, both the recipients here in the second half. Take you to the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. Bucknell 
visit Jeff Walls and the Louisville Cardinals. All for you on ACC Network. Always available on the ESPN app. The Dan Bonner, West Durham, and a, a coverage of Pitt in Florida Gulf Coast tonight. And a three ball out of the timeout for Zach Austin. His first triple of the year. He's got five to lead Pitt here in the second half. Really nice ball movement, and Carrington found a wide open man. Austin was able to step into that one. Lead back to 11 now for the Panthers. Johnston, who's been a pesky scorer tonight for the Eagles. Anderson on the drive. Johnston at three, good. Chase Johnston from the corner. Wes, that was right at the end of the shot clock, and he just let that go so fast, he felt he wasn't going to be able to get it off. Maybe that's the key for him. Don't think about it. Just let it go. Guillermo Diaz-Graham in the traffic. Back to Carrington. Guillermo squares. Three off the back iron. Rebound for Weir. Got to be ready to shoot that when you first catch it, Wes. Three ball from out on the left. And Austin a rebound for Pitt. Carrington, nice feet ahead. Guillermo the catch, left it on the front rim and then slapped it away from Weir. That's going to be Pitt's ball. Yeah, Roger Ayers tapping his head to indicate that Diaz Graham might have slapped it off the head of Andre Weir. Right, Dan. Shot clock winding down, and Chase Johnson buried that one. But, I mean, Wes, he just let that go like a second baseman on a double play. You know, the ball's in his hands, and it's gone. Yep. Eight-point lead. Carrington out front. Strong, and Jeffress kept it alive. Good hustle by Will Jeffress. Leggett, Carrington, Guillermo, Diaz-Graham, and there's the drive and score for Ishmael Leggett. The Panthers He's have struggled shooting. They've struggled shooting the three, but Leggett hadn't struggled driving that ball to the goal. Keyshawn Kelman in the corner. This is Isaiah Thompson for the three. Before the Gulf Coast just keeps hanging around. Yeah, first points of the night for Thompson. Leg it again. Fishing around, got blocked by Kelman off the spin. Skip for Johnston. Lefty runner and pulled away Carrington. Outlet for low on the drive and left it short. How about that rebound by Carrington? This is Miller. And now Thompson to work. Cut through the double team and low reached in with seven on the shot clock. That'll be the second on Jalen Lowe. Nice pressure there by Diaz Graham, but Carrington just pulls the rebound down. And Wes, when you get it out that quickly, you can really get going down the court. The Panthers didn't convert this, but Carrington did a nice job turning the defensive play into offense really quickly. a foul called off the ball an offensive foul on Kelman I believe illegal screen yep third on Keyshawn Kelman <laughs> <laughs> that was not hard <laughs> that one is not hard no. sort of the lean in you have to be stationed here <laughs> So Weir's back on the floor to spell Kelman. Carrington tried to go right by the big guy, but Andre Weir took away the baseline for him. Here's Henson trying to get back on line and 
He's going to get fouled on the runner. And Blake Henson's going to get a couple of free throws out of this. This is really a nice cut and a nice pass. One of the few times tonight that the Panthers have tried to spread the court and make a cut to the basket as opposed to trying to attack with dribble penetration. And Henson like to have that one back. That's one you'd like to see your big guy finish and go to the line for an and one. Couple free throws here for Blake Henson. 10 points in the first half. Scoreless so far here in the second for Jeff Capel's team. throws too strong in the woes at the line tonight continue for the Panthers who are now 15 of 25 at the line you see Dalion Johnson come into the lineup and he replaces Franco Miller Jr. and Henson had that one roll away boy yep Nothing you do about that if you're Jeff Capel. <laughs> and taken away by Jeffress. Did a nice job defending the entry pass. Here's Low. Stops and starts and scores. My goodness. How about that? Yep. A dozen for Jalen Low. It's his best college game of the first three in his career here for the Panthers. Johnson trying to answer. Airballed the three. Carrington. Long two. Did he bank it? I think he did. I think he did. It's a three. It's a three for Carrington. All right. And a timeout. Youth has been served here in Pittsburgh. Jalen Lowe and Bob Carrington. Two rookies in the lineup tonight for the Panthers. And Pitt has built a 12-point lead in the second half for Jeff Capel's team. Under 12 to go in this second half. And, Dan, it's been fun to watch these two rookies go tonight for the Panthers. And well, Jalen Lowe's been really good. Yeah, the zoo may be doing its part, but Jalen Lowe has taken on a big load here. Look his first two games. He said he played very well in areas other than offensively. He didn't shoot the ball well. No problem tonight. You can see there are 12 points on five of eight shooting. Well, the timeout now, and Pat Chambers' team with Isaiah Thompson back on the floor. I think this is another critical spot for this Florida Gulf Coast team. Kelman was calling for the ball on the block. Under 10 on the clock, Thompson to drive and got the runner. Tough shot, five, and Isaiah Thompson's second half. Now you're in a tight spot. You need your best guy to make a play, and Thompson just did. Out front here's low. Three ball off the screen of Diaz. Graham too strong. Thompson again. Now this is guy who started his career at Purdue. He's kind of in the rotation, not a main starter for Painters Boilers, but has uh, come to Florida Gulf Coast and had an impact in Pat Chambers' program for sure. And a fall away by Anderson and a foul on Henson. Blake will draw his second. That is six now on Pitt. And Blake Henson talking with Lee Cassell about things. Well, as you're talking about Isaiah Thompson, and he didn't score a lot at Purdue, but he played in 96 games. Ten-point lead for Pitt. Timeout after the Henson foul. For game 130 for the senior from Zionsville, Indiana. One of the reasons... He is the that, unquestioned leader of this team, right? Yeah, and one of the reasons they went to play at Indiana was because Zionsville is very close but he was not able to play in that game, still recovering from that shoulder injury. But Pat Chambers said, Thompson went to him and said, Coach, I'd like to try. They were really trying to save him for conference play. And Anderson got one of the two, so it's a nine-point game. 
nine games with 20 or more last year for Isaiah Thompson, but here's Carrington. Back to Henson, he'll fire and hit. Bit of a drought from the perimeter for Blake Henson, his second three of the night, his first basket of the second half. Good ball movement and player movement, and Henson was able to step into that one. Back to a 12-point lead for the Panthers. Kelman backing down Diaz Graham will draw the foul on Guillermo. This is really good ball, but you see there's nobody in the post, Wes. They spread the court, and again, Blake Henson can really shoot the three. It's only his second tonight. But again, he's very streaky from out there. Well, the foul on Guillermo Diaz Graham gives Keyshawn Kelman a trip to the line. One for two, and... We'll have a second one coming. Federico comes back. Remember, gotten some quick two quick fouls here in the early part of the second half. So Federico has been over there on the bench, and Kelman gets the back end. So Federico's a guy who Keyshawn Kelman. Federico is a guy who can get into foul trouble, West, because he's so active defensively. Here's Carrington. Working against Largy. Inside of 10, and now Leggett. Left open. Long rebound, Henson. Up strong. Blake Henson's got Pitt's last five. Strong is the word for it, Wes. He just muscled his way to the goal. Yep, 13 point lead. Ahead of nine to go here. Kelman, scoop with the right hand, missed everything. Nice, interesting. Jeffress for Carrington. Now Henson tried to go right at Kelman, and I think it got picked away. So a turnover by the Panthers. Anderson trying to get Jeffers to commit. Turned over, and here is Leggett open floor. Tremendous defense by Jeffers. West. He simply would not let Anderson turn into the lane to his right hand, and it ended up being a turnover. 15-point lead. Largest of the night for the Panthers. Thompson back for Kelman. He'll score. 14 for Kelman on his sixth field goal. That's where it's up over. Go ahead, Dan. That's where Florida Gulf Coast has had their best success, Rex. Here's Carrington oh. back inside. Oh. Nice look for Federico. Federico's going to set that screen and roll to the basket, and you need to be conscious of that. Thompson waiting for help. And huh. Federico going to be called for the foul. This will be four now on Federico. Federico, the junior from Finland, and seven on Pitt, Dan. Uh, Federico is a guy who can be very effective on the inside, and what a pass by Carrington. The Panthers comfortably ahead. How about the ESPN app? Four double-figure scorers tonight, Dan, including the uh, two freshmen, Carrington and uh, Jalen Lowe, who have I've really enjoyed watching these guys for the first time. Wes, uh, I'm with you 100%. They have been very entertaining. And Pitt, they've got 73 points despite the fact that they've shot the ball poorly from three and poorly from the free throw line. Jeff Capel has himself a very interesting team. I think there is an awful lot of potential here. Thompson's got six. And the second one good. Seven for Isaiah Thompson, who played for the other night. 
for the first time against Ave Maria, the NAIA opponent that the, the Eagles beat at home in Fort Myers. He missed the Indiana game, as Dan alluded to earlier. But he's played, uh, played 24 minutes the other night. It looks like he's had a full scoop here as Carrington's three pounds away. Well, that was an open look, and that was not a forced shot. The Panthers, again, just haven't scored well from three, and that's a defensive breakdown. You haven't seen too many of those tonight. Yep. Weir has nine in the ball game. Now on his fourth field goal. And the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast trying to change the tempo a little bit with some pressure. Guillermo Diaz Graham working down on Weir all the way to the basket. Couldn't finish, couldn't get the rebound, and now Isaiah Thompson and the Eagles launching a deep three that's good. Wow, Thompson, a long triple. He's got Weston. 10 now, and it's an eight point game under six to go. Well, they needed to respond and Thompson has. Remember, Wes, he came in the game when it looked like they really needed a spark, and he gave it to him. Carrington. Henson tries to answer, and does. 18 for Henson now. Back to a double-figure advantage for the Panthers. Isaiah Thompson's got all 10 in the second half. Next to go as the Panthers try to get to 3-0 and before Friday night's game with Jacksonville. And then next week, they go off to Brooklyn and Barclays Center to see Florida in the NIT tip-off, Dan. And Jeff Cable's team trying to build a little bit here, but Florida Gulf Coast is riding Isaiah Thompson to keep within arm's reach here with five and a half to play. Three again from out on the left. Good. Another one for Thompson. Wes, we just showed you that graphic where he shot 39% from three at Purdue. So he can shoot it out there. They're doing a nice job running plays to get him open. Yep. 13 all in the second half. And a turnover by the Panthers. Eight-point game. Skip across to the dangerous Chase Johnston against Will Jeffress. Henson gets the switch on Thompson. Anderson against Jeffress. Two to shoot, and Jeffress took it away. Two really good defensive plays by Jeffress here in half two. Diaz Graham straight away. Henson tried for the battle inside. Finally recovered by Largy. The three here makes it very interesting, Wes. Sure does. Thompson, Johnston for three. Nope. We're the rebound and the foul. Guillermo Diaz Graham commits the foul. And Weir with that 265 pound body just out muscled Diaz Graham on the inside. The Panthers did a really good job on the boards in the first half, but Florida Gulf Coast has gotten their share here in the second. And we talked about a three point basket. Well, here's a chance for the Eagles to get a th three the old fashioned way. And they do. We're now two of three at the line. He's got 12 in the game. The lead is five with under four to go. I don't think this is a situation where the Panthers can't settle for a three. They need to get something, I think, going to the basket. Darrington a two. And he is fouled on the play. And we'll get a timeout. Eagles have drawn to as close a pit as they've been the whole half. Five-point game when we come back. In 
front, but Isaiah Thompson's been a big reason the Florida Gulf Coast has made this run, Dan. Well, he's got 13 all in the second half, Wes, and in addition to the fact that he's made three threes here, he's done a great job moving the ball around. He's got a couple of assists. He's got a couple of steals, he, and he's done a nice job defensively. He has really stabilized this team at a point where they absolutely needed it. So Thompson will come back. And he is now right in the neighborhood of the amount of time he played the other night against Ave Maria. You see the Eagle run 13 to three in the last three and a half for Pat Chambers team. Bob Carrington at the line after the foul on Johnston. And the free throw good. That's only the fourth free throw attempt of the second half for the Panthers. And he knocked the boat down. Pushed it back to seven for Jeff Capel's team. Florida Gulf Coast now 51% from the floor. And they've gotten good shots. They've made it. Largy into Weir. Against Federico, tap follow, rolls in. Cyrus Largy. Largy is one of their most effective rebounders at six foot three. He's a very aggressive player, good strength on the inside. Oh my heavens. Now I'm not sure if Weir commits his third. That's the fifth on FGCU. Wes, he, he was trying to do that. That's, <laughs> I mean, Federico, yeah. Federico, not a good free throw shooter. And this is a situation where the officials are going to review it to see if that was a flagrant foul. Because Was he making an attempt to play the ball? He just went and wrapped him up. And so, Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell over for a look. Well, Wes said uh, they're going to look, and again, the flagrant foul, there was nothing excessive there, but it certainly was unnecessary, and it's excessive and or unnecessary and not a legitimate attempt to play the ball. And so those are the two factors they're going to consider. And they've decided it's a flagrant one foul because he did not make a legitimate attempt to play the ball. And Andre Weir will get his third. Well, this is normally something you see <laughs> at the end of the game, but he right. just went right out there and grabbed him, Wes. That was a relatively easy call. I mean, it's not like Federico is the worst free throw shooter in the world. He shot 65% last year, only 33% this year, but he's only been to the line a couple of times. He's two for eight after two misses in the first half. And now two for nine. Uh, that's, of course, with a flagrant one. There's two shots by the person who's fouled, in this case, Federico. Bank it in. There you go. And Pitt gets the ball. And Carrington will handle the inbounds here. You see the free throw numbers tonight for the Panthers. 60%, 18 of 30. But 23 of those were in the first half, those attempts. Leggett squeezes inside and scores. Boy, he is Nine good. and a half for Leggett. Yeah, he is. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he can get to the basket, and he doesn't need to get all the way there. He does a really nice job with that little turnaround. Got good size. Now the switch and Thompson against Henson. Lost it on the dribble, turned it over. Very well played by Henson, moving his feet. And Federico ahead for the dunk. Well, he can run. He can run. Boy, Ishmael Leggett. You know, between, we said this at the top, between the two freshmen, Lowe, Carrington, and then Leggett, 
They're just kind of the sparks to the offensive system that Jeff Capel wants. And there's a look ahead for Federico in the dunk. Now Federico, now he, he knows how to run the court. And Leggett sees him. They're looking for the big guy to run. And when he does, they reward him. But Leggett has, I mean, Leggett has passed the ball well. Leggett has driven the ball to the basket. He's been pretty solid defensively. And it's a 10-point pit lead with 2.24 to go. Dan, the, a year ago, we talked with Jeff Cable about it today. There was Nellie Cummings. There was Jamarius Burton. There was Nike Sabandi. It was Greg Elliott. Greg there were so yeah. many so many variables with this team and it feels like while you don't know the variables by name you're getting a lot of the same type playing personalities out of Jalen Lowe, Ishmael Leggett and certainly Bob Carrington. And I think I think it's a good sign for the Panthers that in the first couple of games they got really good offensive performances uh, from the Diaz Graham twins uh, not at both in the same game but I think it was Jorge in the first game and Guillermo in the second but now, Lowe didn't play well offensively in the first two games. And against higher level competition, he has performed very well tonight. Yep. Again, I, there's just a lot of potential with this pit team. Yeah, they're going to see another A-Sun team on Friday night in Jacksonville before Florida, who played Virginia tight one the other night in Charlotte, next week in Brooklyn. Here is Thompson. Eagles need a basket. Down 10, just ahead of two minutes to go. A screen and a three that missed everything, and that's Leggett recovering the air ball. Lob again. Federico missed the dunk, got the rebound, couldn't score it. Kelman the rebound. That's a tough break for the Panthers. I think Federico got a finger on that shot, and then he just sprinted down to the other end. Baseline they go, and a bump will be called on Carrington. It will be his second. And that is 10 by my count on the Panthers. And Cyrus Largy, the senior from Miramar, who started five games a year ago for Chambers in his first year playing in his 102nd career game tonight for the Eagles at the line for his third point. Two years ago, Largy averaged almost 14 points a game in the 2021 campaign, I should say three years ago, and then had to battle injuries in 21-22. Uh, Nine-point lead with 90 seconds to go at the peak tonight in Pittsburgh. Carrington. Henson now against Johnston. Blake will just turn and now Leggett cutting through. Back for Henson and that's a deep three. Spins out Federico and Pitt with a fresh shot clock and a foul will be called after Henson got it back quickly to Federico and the big man from Finland was fouled. Some really nice interior passing, but I am surprised that Henson didn't shoot that ball, but Leggett, Johnny on the spot once again. And look how deep that shot was. Of course, the shot clock's running down. But really nice interior passing. Federico misses the first. Pat Chambers team, this is not the last power five team they're going to see this the second as well the Eagles are playing an incredibly competitive non-conference schedule out of the A sun and Kelman went to the basket and had it deflected now both Federico and Jeffers were there yep and now Leggett going to wind this shot clock down as you see time winding out on the Eagles night here in Pittsburgh. Leggett to the basket. And they go to the deck, and Federico's got it. And with one on the shot clock, it goes down. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> My heavens. My heavens. <laughs> Carrington, look at this. Oh, my heavens. Bob Carrington. And that's going to do it for Pitt. Henson going to hold the basketball. And the Panthers are going to win 86 to 74, Dan. Florida Gulf Coast gave them quite a test, but I would say this, this, this pit 